Welcome to Women of the Future and today we will be taking up the subject of what it means to come to terms with your feelings. This is something that Sister Denise has touched on in previous episodes in this series where we looked at how women all across the globe can become their true selves by emerging that which is the most highest and most powerful within them. Sister Denise, thank you so much for joining us. It's always wonderful to have you here in the studio with us. Thank you. Coming to terms with your feelings. I've noticed in um, most of the previous episodes that we've done um, before today, you have touched on the subject. And uh, that is why we thought of taking it up today so that we could explore this fully and our um, sisters at home will be able to know what it means uh, to do this. Sister Denise, women uh, have the reputation internationally of um, being um, the ones who are almost in charge of feelings, um, the one who are able to express the feelings and some men argue are the ones who have all the feelings. So um, one can swing that any way one likes. Feelings, you have told us in the past, uh, can be detrimental, can lie to you, can deceive you. Um, how does one come to terms uh, with this? There's a big spectrum. Uh, the emotional spectrum from finer feelings all the way to, you know, really negative uh, um, passions. And uh, I think what we are taught as women is that when you have feelings that's weakness there is that feminine intuition um, there's sensitivities so i think one thing that's really very important for women is to really learn how to work with the different feelings because often enough due to the messages that you should not show your feelings or you should not have any feelings or whatever, one needs to really work with it. To, to actually practice to see, okay, this feeling that I'm having, is it genuine? Is it a reaction? Is it a lying feeling that is, you know, because you get a feeling mixed up with ego mixed up with shame, mixed up with desire, you know, and all this cocktail will produce something that comes out looking really weird. And the woman herself may not be able to uh, figure out all the different elements in this cocktail, and it certainly will be out of control. And then the woman gets kind of embarrassed about it. You know, there is this thing about addiction this definition of addiction is that uh, you will do certain behaviors or you will ingest certain substances because it allows you to manage your feelings which are otherwise unmanageable. Now what we're looking at here is working with feelings, managing feelings so that they're not unmanageable. Mm. And for that we have to have what we call in Raj Yoga as the power of accommodation. And this is a very brilliant power, which means you have to kind of enlarge yourself. So you're big enough to hold a lot of maybe cross currents of feelings and be able to bring your um, refined intellect and conscience into the story so that you express the feelings in such a way that they come out exactly the way you want them to come out. It's when they come out all funny, that it gets out of control. The aspect that's of particular interest to me is that 
We have sisters listening to you right now, women from many parts of the planet who have a certain understanding of um, what they would like to be. Uh, for example, somebody um, who has had past trauma and who is now sitting with a lot of anger and rage. I want to use that example specifically. Now, you are intellectually aware that um, anger is destroying you and possibly others around you. You um, have full understanding and yet feelings are um, something that you've yet to gain control of or master or come to terms with. How is it, Sister Denise, that we can have total understanding of something and yet still not able to manage the feelings? Why is there a dichotomy? Well, I think it's that we don't have total understanding. I think that you have heard that such and such feelings are not allowed, therefore you have to suppress them. That means that they will go off and emerge somewhere else because you can't hold them down too long, you see. So first of all, I think that if there is something that makes you feel angry, uh, you need to say that you have a right to your anger. Um, even though the message that is, um, is that sorry. you don't. Sorry, 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 Sister Denise, that is actually very powerful. You have a right to anger mm. because the message that is sent by, um, well, various resources available on the planet is that it's bad to be angry. Now, yeah. you're saying that you have a right to your anger. You have a right to your anger, but now the question is, uh, you have an option, how will I express it? You feel angry, it's like a monster has been um, brought into being, which is your response to some circumstance, and your response is anger. So this monster can go around and, and destroy everything in sight, I think we, we have a right to the anger, but we also have to tame the anger. There is a, a, a beautiful image in India of the powerful women riding on tigers and lions. And these are very dangerous creatures. Um, and so your anger is like a tiger or a lion or an out-of-control elephant. So the energy of anger is an energy which in a way is similar to your energy of self-respect uh, where you say, you know, no, um, this is not okay. To, to experience the anger is not no, okay. No, no. The situation which provoked the anger is not okay. Yes. Um, when your anger monster is not tamed, it's all not good. Now, if you're angry and what you want is to express that this thing which is happening is not okay, you have to be expressing your anger dispassionately. Why? Because you control it that way. And why is it necessary to control anger? Because otherwise it controls you and it causes you to perform regrettable actions. When you control it, your actions are totally under your sway. You decide, uh, this is not okay, I'm angry about it, so I need to uh, talk to the person concerned, I need to express my feelings, uh, I need to be able to put it into words in such a way that a person will hear me, you see. So if I just have anger all over the place like a forest fire, uh, the person will not hear the message. The person will see the forest fire and say, oh, this is an angry person. I don't like anger, anger is bad. But if you're angry about something, you tame the anger and you say, when you do this or when you did this, it made me feel such and such, such and such and such and such and it implied such and such, such and such, and such and such, and that is not okay. What do you want? I want an apology. I want you to 
you know, take that back. I want, what do you want? You have to see, you see. So that the anger is a force, but it is uh, being guided by your very dispassionate intellect. And then you will get what the anger was provoked for. You will get it. Otherwise, if the anger is all over the place, uh, nobody will understand what you're talking about. And they will just think you're being hysterical. It's counterproductive. Okay, so you're saying then that's imperative to manage one's um, negative emotions. We just use the example of anger. Um, is it necessary, Sister Denise, to manage your good emotions as well? And by that I mean your happiness, your love, your your joie de vie, all of those emotions, feelings. Do you have to manage that as well? Or can you just let them be because they're good feelings? Uh, definitely they're good feelings. And I think it's something, you know, we have this word in India, this word mariada. And so there are lines within which you need to stay to keep that emotion positive and not be misinterpreted or something like this. It's really about developing the art and skill of applying your feelings in such a way that they're always, you know, under your control and you are never under their control because they're powerful energies. But who are you? You are not your feelings. Now, some people think I am my feelings. That's where it gets out of hand. Take us through that step by step, Sister Denise, because a lot of women listening to you right now will say, I'm sorry, what? What do you mean you're not your feelings? That is, um, that is more difficult to deal with than I'm not my thoughts far more difficult because um, feelings are felt at your core. But they're still possessions. Feelings are possessions. Well, you say my feelings. Well, that's using the possessive. You don't say I feelings. Is it Denise, I understand what you're saying intellectually. It makes a lot of sense. But how are you able to implement what you just said? What do you do with this understanding? And my concern is, if you create distance between your, you and your feelings, won't you become, I don't know, dead woman walking? <laughs> no, Not. no, no, no. Your feelings are um, like ornaments or um, skills or they belong to you and you can do with them as you choose. It's really a matter not of creating distance between you and your feelings but of differentiating between you and your feelings. Okay, um, somebody who's spiritually grounded, does she ever act on her feelings? Of course she does, but she will act on her feelings um, having decided I will act on these feelings in this way, that way or the other way. Okay, so um, your feelings are like a consultant. Uh, let's look at it a different way. Okay. Hold on. Something happens, you have a reaction. You will call your reaction your feelings. I will say it's not your feelings, it's your reaction. You have a reaction which stimulates a lot of feelings. If you do not manage those feelings and that reaction, the karma that you do will not be what you want it to be. You will perform an action under the influence of those feelings and you will it'll be a regrettable action. And then you have to come back and reset and sort out and apologize and all sorts of things which are not good for your dignity. Uh, I, I think that you have raw, gross feelings and then you have very refined feelings. I think the person who is spiritually developed will have learned how to work with feelings to such an extent that the feelings are always you know, expressed in exactly the way that you want it to be, bearing in mind all the uh, long-term consequences of that expression. You see, an artist 
with a paintbrush and color can throw the color on the canvas but he has to be able to control the color to make the uh, image that he wants you see and and it's like that with feelings feelings are our colors and um, paint brushes and so on but what do we want to show my goodness this takes an extraordinary amount of internal work well, this is what this is all about. You, uh, as a woman, you have a lot of possibility to do inner work. And it's really about doing it systematically. Mm. And you may say to yourself, okay, I am a very reactive person and it gets me into trouble. That being the case, we have to say, okay, how am I reacting how am i under the influence of provocating really you are giving away your power by being reactive you're giving away your power by being reactive so the motivation sister denise will will be uh, what you just said as well as if you act on your emotions you will be performing regrettable action someone with whom you have a very good relationship says something about someone who you're close to which provokes a strong reaction but you decide that um, I don't want to engage on that subject with this person because it's private. I have to be able to get my provoked feelings to come down quietly and sit uh, because uh, it's not my choice to get into an argument about this subject this is a private matter between me and myself not between me and that person do you see what I'm saying yeah. and sometimes people can provoke stuff which is nothing to do with them yeah and you have to be able to catch it that look there's nothing to do with them this is between me and me keep it that way mm. otherwise you know you're your private stuff is out there. Yeah, I'd now like to touch upon the subject of uh, relationships, which is an all important subject for most women. Uh, this is not just the sig most significant relationship in one's life that I'm referring to, but we choose our um, uh, people in our lives, friends, and some friends become family. Mm, we choose them based on our feelings about them. Well, I think we should choose it based on our feelings and our understanding. We need to bring the mind and the intellect both when we're making a judgment. Because if we make judgments based on feelings, uh, as the feelings change, the judgment's going to change. Feelings keep changing. Uh, there's um, a woman watching you right now who's fallen in love and wants to get married. Uh, and deeply, deeply in love. And then um, she's also aware that uh, the divorce rate in her country, as it is globally, is shockingly high. And she wants to know what criteria she needs to use to decide whether to take this relationship further or not. Well, what she would need to do is check out the person's character. Without the feelings. Without the feelings. That's quite a challenging thing to do because um, well, it's a matter of your life. You say you want to get married. You're not going to get married with what you're feeling right now. You're going to get married with a person who has a history, who has a character, who has other relatives and so on. And so, okay, your feelings make you feel attracted to that person physically, emotionally on that particular period of time. And you know what we say in Raj Yoga is this strong attraction is an indicator of karmic account. And of course, nobody knows that, but we know that. So if I'm attracted to somebody, it'll bring up a red flag and say, aha, uh -huh, there's going to be some element here of karmic account. That means the attraction is going to really tie you up together and when you really can't separate that's when the repulsion sets in and then you know you can't separate because you're too tied up so if people know that they will uh, follow the dictates of their feelings with caution 
Whoa, Sister Denise, that is quite a bomb. Yes. I feel like stopping here and just going into silence <laughs> because um, that was so extremely loaded. For those of you watching, I'm going to leave that right there because uh, I don't think it's necessary to take it further. So, um, Sister Denise, when it comes to one's um, uh, internal world, how do you know whether you are a balanced, healthy someone? When you don't need anyone. <laughs> My goodness, uh, this is one of those episodes where I think we should have another 50 episodes just because of what you said in this one. There isn't a single person on the planet watching you right now, even those who are not watching you right now, who, who doesn't feel that they need at least one person, uh, not just one, at least 20. 30, 100. Okay, take the word needy. If you're needy and you see somebody, oh, I need this person, not because this person's necessary, but because I'm needy and I'm going to use that person to fulfill my needs, which is actually improper way to relate to that person. How should one relate to a person? You, you just have to see, okay, Okay, here's this person who's come into my life. What is life all about? What is this all about? You have to really look at it cool, calm and collected and not just make a lifelong decision based upon a momentary feeling or especially not a feeling of need, you know. And so many people are, you will make me happy. Excuse me? That's not going to work. It is not anybody's responsibility to make somebody happy. You have to make yourself happy. There are very few women on the planet who know that uh, part and parcel of um, getting into a significant relationship with somebody, you know, the relationship, is because you have an expectation that that person will treat you in a way that's designed to make you happy. Better look at it a different way. When you come together with another person, you're going to share your life, you're going to share family, you're going to share uh, time, money, so many things. You have to really see dispassionately if you're really matching with that person. Dispassionately. Yeah. And then you can say, okay, my, my feelings actually need to be secondary to these other considerations. That's difficult for women. Yeah, because we're all about feelings. Mm -hmm. But feelings to the exclusion of common sense is not good. That's another bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> feelings to the exclusion of common sense is not good. If one proceeds in that direction, the consequence will be what? You see, in a relationship, it goes 50, 60 years, whatever it is. And, and a, a relationship has to be constantly renegotiated because you were changing, circumstances are changing, you are aging, the other one is changing, something can happen, whatever it is. You have to really understand what does this relationship entail? What are my obligations? What are my privileges? What are my rights? Is this doable? Is this feasible? And if you do it only on the basis of feelings, uh, what happens is feelings make you blind to things that somebody else who doesn't have any feelings will see immediately. If you get caught up with this person, do you realize what's going on? Do you know this is an abusive person or not? Is it honest or not? Uh, do they have a history of infidelity? You know, all of these things you have to look at. Mm. You see. Um, Sister Denise, there are many women watching you right now for whom depression is a daily reality. Mm. Do you have something to say to them? We have a whole spectrum of feelings. Okay, so I feel depressed because this happened, that happened, the other happened. So if I'm feeling depressed, I have the opportunity, the possibility to manage that feeling of depression. How? If it gets out of my capacity, then it sort of moves into the clinical area. But there are many things which can make a person feel depressed. There you have to really bring in your, your common sense, you know, and sort of uh, 
catch hold of your feelings and say, look, you know, don't let your feelings get the better of you. So I think it's just very good for people to hear that um, you should not let your feelings get the better of you. You should not operate on feelings to the exclusion of common sense. You should be grounded. So we have come to the end of today's episode, almost the end. Any last words for our viewers who are watching you right now in open mouth shock? <laughs> uh, no, I would definitely say that we have to have breadth to be able to manage and accommodate a big spectrum of feelings without those feelings throwing us off track, you see. And, and give a lot of importance to our common sense, to our intelligence, so that we do not do something on the basis of feelings which we would never do in the clear light of day of being um, dispassionate. For many of you, what you've heard today is probably news, as in fresh news, something that you've never heard before. But um, if you're sitting in my chair, as you are in the comfort of your own home, um, if one applies one's mind to what Sister Denise shared, I'm sure you'll find that a lot of things that she says make sense. And um, although it might be new to you, I would invite you to reflect deeply on what she said and to see whether you can put this into practice to make decisions in your life with a setup where you use your feelings as a part of a consultative process but also uh, what Sister Denise shared uh, think dispassionately I do like that word that you use dispassionately. Thank you so much for joining us and I do hope to see you again soon. Thank you Sister Denise Thank and you. goodbye to you the viewer. Mm -hmm.